Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about evaluating cards. We're going to look at the progression from bronze to gold and what comparing cards to each other. First, we're going to start off with our vanilla cards. These are the kind of cards that beginners are going to see. Uh, vanilla cards have no ability text, they're just stats on the board. They're very simple, kind of teach you how to play. So the, at the beginning we have the bronze with 8 base strength, our manticore with 10, and our Geralt with 12. You can see that there's a two point distance between each of these, but we also have to account for the immunity that golds have. Immunity protects things from getting like weakened, from things like Azure's Thunder, but it also prevents them from being buffed, like from Swallow Potions. So immunity is a double-edged sword. Now, if we add an ability, let's say resilience to a card, you now notice that the bronze unit goes down to four, but if you know what resilience does, it carries a unit over to the next round. And in this case, that means your four is carried over to the next round, that's eight points. This is eight points, this is eight points. There's the kind of balance there, but you can see that once we get into silvers, that balance is now broken. This is seven points carried over to another round, so if this is 10, this 7, the 7 points gets doubled to 14. That's 4 points more value just in a vacuum than the Manticore does. Now you also have to take into account that the um, monsters have a passive and stuff, but we're right here we're just focused on the card in itself, ignoring passives, a faction passive. So there's also the change in the distance between these cards. So you have plus three, so four to seven plus three, and that's times two because this card stays on the board for two rounds. Then we have Zoltan here. You might notice that there's no point difference between these two, and it's immune. Now in context of dwarf deck, immunity is bad because dwarf decks like to buff a lot of stuff. Having a gold card that cannot be buffed is bad. So immunity, in this case, here this would be fine because I assume that you're just trying to hold a large thing on the board. So immunity just protects you from your opponent's control cards. Here, immunity is really bad. And that's why I kind of think Zoltan's a lot lower tier than other cards. You can evaluate the card in context with its immunity, but you can also evaluate its context in balance. Yes, it's, it's basically minus five points to be carried over to the next round. Now, it's still better than Geralt because this is worth 14 points, where Geralt's only worth 12. Now we're going to move on to the next thing, evaluating two similar cards. So now we've already talked about how this they're both effectively eight strength. But in certain cases, these cards are weaker to some things and stronger against other things. If it's locking in Azor's Thunder, then the Fiend's better, because the Azorus Thunder is getting 8 points worth of value when it destroys a defender, and it's only getting 7 points of value when it uh, damages a Fiend, because you're removing the uh, defender for 2 rounds. The Locking removes 4 strength from the effective, the effective 4 strength from the defender. Why? Because the defender lasts 2 rounds, so removing 1 round worth of strength is 4 points. With the Fiend, it doesn't do anything, so locking has no effect on the theme. Buffing cards, however, are completely opposite story. Every case, a buffing card gets twice the value on the defender because it's being carried over to another round. I put a Swallow Potion on a defender, that's 16 points of extra value, while on the theme, that's only 8. Um, Thunderbolt Potion's the same. All of it is doubled, and that's why Defender is really powerful, is that since potions tend to be in the ballpark of other bronze, bronze units, you're basically getting double value bronzes every time you play a buffing card on a Defender. This was the same case for uh, Foltes when he was copying poor fucking infantry back in the early, early closed beta. Now, so there's some more incalculable differences. Now let's look at these two, these three, um, these three two base strength units. One's a gold, one's a silver, one's a bronze. They have very similar effects, except they have access to different kinds of cards. 
and some of them are loyal and some of them are disloyal. The Emissary is disloyal. It has access only to bronze units. If we say the average bronze unit is worth eight points, then it, we're just we're saying that for now. Of course, if you build a deck, you're going to get more than eight points. But if we say that the average is eight points, then the you have to subtract two from the two points you give your opponent, and you effectively put six points onto the board. With Priscilla, it's loyal, so you add two points to your side of the board, and you have access to silvers. If we assume that the average silver is worth ten points, of course, again, that isn't true, but if it was, uh, then you're effectively getting twelve points for playing Priscilla. And you're getting some deck thinning. All of these will give you a little bit of deck thinning, which has its own incalculable value. So there's a four point difference between just these two cards, and that's Kind of significant and i think that's why priscilla is one of the best silvers in the game then we have dijkstra we have to dijkstra is disloyal now so if we go that's minus four from priscilla but it gets you a guaranteed gold if we say the um the standard gold is worth at least 12 points it's at least as good as Geralt, if not much better then this is effectively giving you a 10 point goal on the board because you have to subtract the two that you get from Dijkstra. Now there are a lot of different com complex factors which makes just looking at the flat points of these cards not good enough. And when you become a more advanced player you can decide whether or not you're going to have an Emissary or Priscilla or a Dijkstra in your deck if it's worth that compared to another card of the same tier. Would I like a different bronze than an Emissary, a different silver than Priscilla, or a different gold than Dijkstra? There are so many different things like that. But the beginning thing is, you're going to start off as a new player, looking at these vanilla cards that you start off with, and then evaluating the impact of every card against them. Once you have a big enough collection and you don't have any of these cards in your deck anymore, you start evaluating them against things like the Mahakama Defender. Am I getting more value from having another Mahakama Defender in my dwarf deck as opposed to an Elven Mercenary? How much value am I effectively getting onto the board? How much more value am I getting on the board for having Elven Mercenaries or having a, a Blue Mountain Commando? Is preventing control my opponent's control from going off giving me a lot more value? In the end because sometimes your opponent's control could be worth like 20 points and so being able to counter that can be a big deal like if you needed to bounce back a uh, um, a cow carcass from a rock tosser that could be a huge deal okay. well, that ends the video i hope that was very informative and made you think about the progression between bronze and gold and comparing cards and may you know you learn something, basically. Bye.